The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. Good morning and welcome to the online morning service at St Barnabas and today's theme is going to be generosity. Uh, my name's Ian, I'm one of the ministers coming to the end of their training um, at St Barnabas and I'm joined this morning by Rosa. Good morning Rosa. Good morning Ian, I'm Rosa and I'm one of our leaders of our messy little church, our messy church youth groups. Um, let's start our uh, worship today with the wonderful hymn, All for Jesus. Welcome in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy and peace be with you. And also with you. We meet in the presence of God. Who knows our needs, hears our cries, feels our pain and heals our wounds. Let us confess and say sorry to God together. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins in penitence and faith. We have not always worshipped God, our creator. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have not always followed Christ, our saviour. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We have not always trusted in the Spirit, our guide. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So we can be reassured of God's forgiveness. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So now it is the time of us to share the peace. And so as a forgiven people with the peace that comes from living in Christ Jesus, let us now share that peace with one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Perhaps you might want to type something in the comments box. But peace with all of you and peace be with you, Ian. Peace be with you, Rosa. Well, now I turn to Leslie, who's going to do our first reading from the book of Corinthians. Good morning, everyone. This morning's reading is from 2 Corinthians 1 to 15. Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, how that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to, the, for to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves. Praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. 
and as they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord, and unto us by the will of God. Insomuch that we desired Titus, that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also. Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith, and in utterance, and knowledge, and in all diligence, and in your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also. I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others, and to prov prove the sincerity of your love. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. And herein I give my advice, for this is expedient for you, who have begun before not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. Now therefore perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which ye have. For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. For I mean not that other men be eased and ye burdened, but by equality that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want, that their abundance also may be a supply for your want, that there may be equality. As it is written, He that hath gathered much had nothing over, and he that hath gathered little had no lack. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord our God together. There is one body, one spirit, one hope in God's call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. There is one God, Father of all, over all and in all. To whom Christ ascended on high. And through his spirit he gives us gifts. Some are apostles, some are his prophets. Evangelists, pastors and teachers he gives us. So we can minister together to build up his body, to be mature in the fullness of Christ. So let us now worship together in song.
reading today comes from John chapter 6, verses 1 to 14. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up to the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, six months wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed a prophet who is come into the world. We'll now join Sue who brings us our talk this week on generosity. In our sermon series on the fruits of the Holy Spirit, we come to the fruit of generosity, which is produced in us as we allow Jesus to work in our lives. The word generosity is derived from the Latin word generosus, meaning of noble birth. It's also known as largesse or magnanimity, it's interesting to note that this word comes from the Latin words magnus and anima, which literally means great or large soul. They say that practising generosity does enlarge our hearts and open them up to love for others. Being stingy and selfish with our gifts causes us to be like the fictional Ebenezer Scrooge in Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, closed in on ourselves with small hearts that have no room for others. But let's see what our readings this morning tell us about generosity. Paul starts off by telling the Corinthians about the surprising and generous ways in which God is working in the churches in Macedonia province. Fierce troubles had come down upon the people of those churches pushing them to the very limit. The trial exposed their true colours. They were incredibly happy, though desperately poor. And this triggered off something totally unexpected, an outpouring of pure and generous gifts. They gave offerings of whatever they could, far more than they could afford, pleading for the privilege of helping out in the relief of poor Christians. This was totally their own idea and caught Paul and his companions completely off guard. But what explained this amazing giving was that they had first given themselves unreservedly to God and to Paul's party. The other material giving simply flowed out of the purposes of God working in their lives. Now it looks as though the Corinthian believers excelled in everything. They had faith, good preaching, much knowledge, much earnestness and much love. They also had money which they had previously planned to collect for the struggling churches. It's the struggling churches in Jerusalem, but it looks as though that was as far as it got. Here Paul doesn't want to sound like he's bossing them around, but hopes that by bringing the Macedonians' enthusiastic giving to the Corinthians' attention, it might act as a stimulus to their love and bring the best out of them. Paul had actually told the Macedonian churches of the Corinthians' generous plans, so it would make Paul look bad if they didn't eventually fulfil what they had planned to give the year before. Now before you think, ooh, is this the church trying to get money out of us? Paul gives some principles for giving. Firstly, 
Our willingness to give cheerfully, not reluctantly or under compulsion, is more important than the amount we give, for God loves a cheerful giver. Secondly, give what you can, not what you can't. Sacrificial giving should be generous but also responsible, so that those who depend on the givers, their families for example, should not go without having their basic needs met. But generosity isn't about money, although Paul realised that with the relatively rich Corinthians, the giving of their money did not assume the same urgency or importance that their other devotions to God. Paul reminded them of the generosity of Christ Jesus, who had given everything away, laid aside his glory when he came to earth as a human being, so that we might receive the riches of his grace, his abundant eternal life, which he won for us by giving up his life on the cross. Now let's look at our gospel reading, The Feeding of the Five Thousand, a well-known story. There were 5,000 very hungry people. Even six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get just a little, we are told. Now, I don't know how many people may have brought a packed lunch for themselves, but they were adults and knew there was no way that that could be shared between so many. But a little boy offered the little he had. And look what Jesus did with it. With that small offering of five barley loaves and two fish, he fed 5,000 people with as much as they wanted until they were satisfied so that noth- and so that nothing was wasted, they filled 12 baskets with fragments of leftover bread after everyone had had their fill. Such is the ab- abundant generosity of God in Jesus Christ. Now, generosity is more than about just giving money. We can be generous in our judgments of others. We can be generous with our time, with our gifts, with our hospitality. It's not about quantity. It's about willingness to give what we have, however small, to God and then see what wonders he can accomplish with it. And why should we give of ourselves to God? Well, really, the same as Michael said last week when he said we try to be kind because God was first kind to us. Everything we have has come from God. Every breath we take is a gift from him. We are able to be generous because God is first generous to us. We are able to be generous because God's spirit lives in us and we in him. As we let Jesus reign in our hearts and minds, we will begin to produce all those fruits of which we have been speaking over the last few weeks. So come along again next week to find out more of those fruits. Let us declare our faith in God together. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So let us pray. We pray for the teams that are helping our church to open for private prayer and beginning to allow people back for public worship. Lord, give them wisdom to keep themselves and everyone safe in this difficult time. And we pray for the benefits of Morton in Marsh with Batsford, Toddenham, Lower Leamington and Longborough. And we also lift Archbishop Laurent Mabanda in the province de l'Eglise, Anglican or Rwanda. And we pray for the world. We pray for those in our own parish and especially remembering those that live in Millen Avenue and Morban Grove this week and all that they do. Let them be close to you, Lord. And we pray for our residential homes. 
We give thanks that the lockdown is finally beginning to ease for some of those homes and the visitors can begin to meet their loved ones again. In particular, we pray for those who live and work in Westbourne and also for the staff and pupils at Shooting Stars Nursery and all their families. We also think of those at the Venture City in White City that are starting the Venture Holiday Kitchen. We pray for all those that are running it and all those that will visit during the summer. May they have fun, laughter and feel your love with them, O oh Lord. And in this time of the Covid pandemic, we pray for the businesses and organisations who are starting to reopen and making plans to reopen in the coming weeks and months. We also pray for those businesses in areas where they are beginning to have to close for short periods of time. Let them to be able to sustain themselves and their families through that difficult time. And we pray for the many people whose mental health has been affected by the lockdown, by these strange circumstances. And Lord, we pray that you are with them as they begin to venture out and face the world again. And we pray for all those places that have seen an increase in new cases and are experiencing new lockdown measures like Manchester, Aberdeen and the countries in Greece and France, Spain and also in Melbourne. May all those people feel your love with them during the difficult time of having to secure themselves safely inside their homes. We also pray for all those in Beirut, for the firefighters. We pray for the people that have been injured, that have been killed and for all their families and friends. May they know your love and peace with them in this terribly difficult time. And we pray for the sick, for Janet, Colin, Tim, Mick, Joan, Noel, Julia, Rachel, Christopher, Claire, Kay, Mary, Phil, Terry, Kate, Cloda and William. We pray that they may feel your healing touch on their lives and that you are with the healthcare professionals that are taking care of them. And we also pray for their families, that they feel your sustaining love and your presence with them. And in a moment of quiet, we lift to you those people in our hearts who are sick and need your healing touch. And we pray for those who mourn, especially the families of Ruby Ford, Peter Minol, Diane Smith, Rosalind Treacher, Joan Liddington, Christine McKee and John Hollyhead. May you be with their families in their time of grieving. Not just today, but in the weeks, months and years to come. Let them have the hope of eternal salvation and your love. And we give all these prayers to you, O Lord, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So some uh, community notices for this week. Um, there's lots of details about these in your uh, newsletter that you should have uh, got either by email or hand delivered. Um, but just a few things that I'd like to pick out. Uh, the Court Community Association uh, has got a free barbecue and cream teas. I think you pay for the drinks, but the barbecue is free with uh, 
burgers and sausages. Um, you can go and share for a socially distanced front at the Court Community Centre on Saturdays in August. So right to the end of August between 12 and 2. So everyone's welcome to that. Please pray for Jenny Leahy and the team that were involved in organising all that. Uh, another really exciting community thing happening is the Venture Holiday Kitchen. Uh, if you want to pop along for some lunch, have a chat, uh, there's some craft and activity packs to stay creative and to stay active over the summer holidays. It's in the Venture Centre on Northfield Road in White City from 12 to 1.30 on Wednesdays until the end of August. So Wednesday the 5th, 12th, 19th and 26th. Um, a little bit about our services. As you may be aware, we are cautiously and very carefully beginning to do some more things within the church building. So we are now starting to open for very simple communion service on Sundays at 9am. There isn't uh, singing, there is some uh, quiet music, there's communion and prayers. Um, numbers are very limited, as you can imagine. So if you're interested in attending, please make sure that you book in advance. Unfortunately, we won't be able to let people in on the day. So simple communion uh, service on Sundays, nine o'clock. We're very limited. So if you're interested in uh, going along to that, can you please uh, book with Reverend Sarah after 7 p.m.? So from 7 p.m. on Wednesday before the service right through obviously Thursday Friday until we're full up so unfortunately it's first come first served but if you're um, unable to get in one week we'll put you as priority for the following week and obviously it will be quite different to the normal service so there will be wel a welcoming team to help you guide through the, to, to guide you through the morning to make sure uh, you're safe and get the very best from the service. Um, next week, uh, if you're tuning in uh, at 10 or 10.30 in the morning to see the recorded service, unfortunately that you won't get to see one in the morning because we're going outside next week. So at St Barnabas Church in the church garden, Sunday the 16th at 10.30, uh, it's a really excited, uh, exciting new thing that we're going to try and it's called Rooted. Um, fun and fresh air so all ages are welcome so it's particularly aimed at uh, kind of families but everyone's welcome but you will need to book so we're going to try and create a new wildflower meadow at the back and the side of the church there's a wonderful bit of grass there which would make a really lovely um grass uh, sort of um wildflower meadow and the best way of doing that is to plant some wildflower seeds so we'll be doing that there'll be an opportunity to take some free seeds home and plant some in your garden uh, you'll need to picnic blankets a camping chair bring along a drink and a snack as i said limited numbers should be really exciting great to do something new let's fingers crossed and pray that the weather is uh, fine uh, next sunday and to book that same as before if you can contact the reverend sarah by phone or by email her contact details are in the sheet uh, and they're also on the website so those are just some of the notices and if you have a look at your sheet or look online you can find out more of the great things that are happening um, in and around St Barnabas Church. Rosa. Thank you Ian, all sounds very exciting. So now we have our final song showing the generosity of God's love for us. This is How Deep the Father's Love for Us.
May the spirit who hovered over the waters when the world was created breathe life into each of us. Amen. May the spirit who overshadowed Mary when the eternal son came among us make you joyful in the service of the Lord. Amen. May the spirit who set the church on fire upon the day of Pentecost bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. So thank you very much for joining us this morning. We had a great time. And don't forget that after the, uh, this recording goes out at 11.30, at 11.30 there is a meeting on Zoom. The link for that is on the new sheet. So if you've got that, you can just click or copy and paste that. Uh, if you're having problems finding it, then please uh, contact one of the ministry team and we'll set you up with a link for that. So 11.30 Zoom coffee. Look forward to seeing you then. So thank you, Rosa. And I hope you have a good day. It's been, it's been lovely to spend this time with you. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.